Hi, this is Russ Anderson. Nothing can ruin a perfectly good visual effects shoot faster than a bunch of actors waltzing around back and forth in the shot. Yet that tends to happen pretty often. So in this tutorial we'll take a look at what the issues are and what to do about it within SynthEyes. So in this particular shot we've got two different elements. One a cockpit door that's closing as well as the actress within the cockpit. And if we just go and create a, a bunch of auto trackers now, you'll see that, sure enough, there's a, a tracker on the cockpit here. There's actually another back there, as well as a couple of trackers inside this cockpit area that are moving around with the actress. So when you have a camera track or an object track, all of the trackers have to be rigidly connected together in 3D, they all have to be attached to the same physical thing, and none of them can move separately in 3D. That's one of the fundamental requirements for being able to do this magic of figuring out where everything went. So in a shot like this, we have to identify spots where things are moving independently and remove them. Now in a simple enough shot, we can just go and, and visually find them and hit the delete key to take them out. And and this, you know, we might need to only take out three or four or something, and we'd be able to have something that we could get a good solve for. But SynthEyes does offer a more systematic way to address this, which is using a rotospline masking capability, and I'd like to show that here. So I'm just going to select and create a big rectangular spline to mask out the area, that I don't want to have trackers inside. So I just set that up at the beginning of the shot. Now down here somewhere to the end, we'll go and reposition things. I can kind of move the spline around as a unit or I can go and adjust the vertices themselves. And the key point is that I'm just setting up a very rough mask to say where I don't want to create any trackers. So maybe in this particular case I'll move this one out a little further so you don't have any corner. So I've got a little mat mask set up and if you look over in the roto control panel you'll see that this newly created spline is set up as a garbage spline. So any trackers that, that might get created in here will just be sent to the garbage instead. But there's also another spline that's set up that encloses the entire image. So the way this works is, well, it, if any potential tracker is not inside the inner spline and it is inside of this one, it's going to get assigned to camera one. So you can go and manipulate the splines to control what goes, you know, what gets assigned to what. If I wanted to do tracking only within this spline, I would go and take this spline and change it to be on camera one. I would delete this overall enclosing spline altogether. But having gotten this set up, now I can go run the tracker again and And now I don't have any spline, any trackers within the spline. Now there's one other aspect of this shot that I'll, I'll point out. It kind of saw me had to figure out a little bit when I was setting up the spline. And that's that for a pretty good portion of the shot, nothing is actually moving. The camera's not moving. And so any tracker that is created and visible only during that tail end part of the shot, and here it's around frame 200 on, there's never going to be any perspective shift on those trackers. And it's actually pretty easy to go and find those and eliminate them because we're not going to be able to get a good 3D solve on them. So I can select a sorting based on time for the trackers and just select these trackers that are only valid past this 
spot where the camera stops moving and just uh, take them out. So having done that, now I'm ready to go and do the solve. And I, I rapidly get a nice uh, solve here. And I might go and clean things up a little bit more, looking at things in detail with the tracker cleanup and with the graph editor and so on. But we, we basically have a reasonable saw. Now I just give kind of a, a hint on this kind of a shot that if, in fact, what we are planning to do is build the rest of the spacecraft as a 3D environment around this uh, cockpit area, we'd probably want to add a couple of supervised trackers to known points that we could locate on our 3D model so that if we have a whole bunch of shots like this, we can go and repeatedly and repeatably set up the coordinate system the same way in each of these shots so that we can just basically drop the whole 3D model for the rest of the vehicle into the shot the same way just by setting up the coordinate system the same way each time. And like I said, to do that, you'd probably pick out a couple of points and go and set up supervised tracks for them in each of the uh, shots that you need to handle. So I hope that gives you an idea of uh, some things to do. Take care.